Hi, this is John Profiter, Field Agronomist with Pioneer. Today we're going to be talking about iron deficiency chlorosis symptomology in soybeans, also known as IDC. As you can see in the field behind me here in the Platte River Valley, we have quite a bit of IDC symptomology showing up this year. IDC is really induced by a lack of availability of iron in the soybean plant or the lack of that plant's ability to convert it to a usable form. Really, there's multiple environmental and management factors that can be considered for managing IDC. As far as environmental factors, we look at soil pH levels. Those above 7.5 are a key trigger for high pH symptoms. Also, high soil carbonate levels, high soil salinity levels, and high soil nitrate levels can all magnify IDC symptomology. High carryover nitrate levels amplify the symptomology due to the blocking of the plant's ability to convert the ferrous form of iron taken into the plant to the ferric form that the plant can use for physiological processes such as photosynthesis. As we look at management practices, a couple of things we need to consider. First of all, we need to understand what the field soil pH level is. If we have soil pHs above 7.5, we need to take extra steps to manage that for IDC. The other thing we need to look at is really variety specific selection for that field. Pioneer varieties are screened and rated for their suitability for high pH situations and iron deficiency chlorosis scenarios. So pick a variety that is above average or strong for that particular situation. Also, we need to take in consideration row widths and seeding rates. Wide row, row widths such as 30 or 36 inch rows with higher seeding rates of 200,000 seeds per acre or greater are really key management factors that we can utilize to minimize IDC. Another thing that we can do in these high pH fields is utilize a in-furrow iron chelate product, specifically in an ortho-ortho form at planting time, and really helps by putting that particular product close to the seed in the root zone for minimizing IDC. As we look at other factors that we can take in consideration, we need to manage our carryover nitrate levels from the previous year's corn crop by watching the nitrogen fertilizer applied to that crop or the manure applied. And also, we can utilize companion crops such as oats or rye to help before we plant soybeans to take the nitrates out of the soil profile. One last thing we get a lot of questions on is our foliar applications of iron chelate products. Universities have shown that these do help green up the plants, but don't always lead to a yield response. One last thing to consider is the use of herbicides for post-application weed control as some ALS and group 14 PPO herbicides can add induced stress on the soybean plants causing the IDC to be worse. For more, que more questions or any further answers about IDC or management factors or specific pioneer variety selection for these types of soils, contact your local pioneer sales professional. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.